We're now officially over a year into the life of JWST operations. We finished 2022 and are heading full steam into 2023. So let's take a look at the final images we've seen throughout December this year and marvel at the wonders of the universe. Let's start with a familiar object for keen JWST watchers. This is the Southern Ring Nebula. You might remember that back when we were celebrating the very first JWST images to ever be released, one of the lucky objects to feature then was this very nebula. It's a huge cloud of dust and gas that's been thrown off by the corpse of a dying star. Well, actually, that's something that we've learned since this first image was released. It's not only one or two stars in the center of this nebula, but we now think it could have been up to five stars interacting that caused the specific shape of this cloud. This is a graphic that shows how five stars together might have created the shape of the nebula. Although do note that only one star is actually dying and blowing off gas, and it's just the gravitational influence and jets of radiation from the other stars that carved out the shape. These new look images have tons of gorgeous detail for us to see. Just look at all of these beautiful wisps and streaks in space. I really love seeing all of this stuff. It adds real character to quite a beautiful death of a star. I think that this is the same data from those first images. As far as I can tell, it's just combining different wavelengths together to give us a unique way of seeing the nebula. But I don't think the object has yet been revisited by the telescope. One cool thing that the teams have now been able to do, given the time since the data was taken, and now combining it with data from other telescopes too, is calculate the mass of the star that's been shedding its layers to create the nebula before it sprayed itself into the surrounding space. It was about three times the mass of our sun, although now it's only about 60% of the mass of our sun. Around Christmas time, the telescope then treated us to a wreath-like spiral galaxy called NGC 7469. This is a very luminous face-on spiral that's about 220 million light years from Earth and has a diameter of about 90,000 light years. Also, if you look down in the bottom left of the image, we see a tease of its companion galaxy too. This is a galaxy called IC5283. It's smaller than our main galaxy here, but the two are gravitationally interacting and definitely affecting each other. Here you can see the two of them in an older Hubble image, but to see the absolute best detail in our wreath, we want to be looking at this new JWST version. This image was taken as part of a project to look at the formation and mergers of galaxies, as well as black hole growth and feedback in nearby galaxies that are merging and are bright in infrared light, making them perfect JWST targets. We've actually already seen a couple of other images from this project from JWST. And I've talked about them in other videos, so check out the links in the description to see more about those ones too. One of the things I love in this one is the colour of the image here. We have the gorgeous blue and purple hues of the glowing gases, and the reds and oranges of the regions filled with stars. The red spikes though, those aren't actually real, but are actually diffraction spikes caused by the hexagonal shape of the JWST mirror and the struts holding the secondary mirror in place. They're just an artifact in the image caused by the telescope itself. The reason they're coming out of the center though is that this galaxy is home to an extremely bright AGN or active galactic nuclei. This is a central black hole eating up huge amounts of matter. As all of that lovely matter falls into the black hole, it bumps into all of the other matter around it and friction causes it to heat up to huge temperatures and it starts glowing. And I mean really glowing brightly. These things get so bright that they can outshine the entire galaxy that they live in. That's why we have such big diffraction spikes here. Those spikes get worse the brighter an object is. The galaxy is bright, but it's not bright enough to cause spikes. The very center, however, is so incredibly bright that it creates big spikes that dominate the image. Despite those spikes, JWST is allowing scientists to study the dusty environments of the galaxy, including a starburst ring and the central AGN, along with all of the gas and dust in between. It's the incredible resolution of JWST that lets us do this in more detail than ever before. This image and other data collected about the galaxy from JWST's MIRI, NERCAM and NERSPEC instruments 
have already shown us many new things about this galaxy. We've only publicly seen this one image, but I'm sure there's much more to come. We do now know about never before seen details like very young star forming clusters, pockets of very warm, turbulent gas, and we now have direct evidence for the destruction of dust grains within a few hundred light years of the center, proving to us that the AGN is impacting the surrounding interstellar medium. With more time and data, JWST will continue to unlock more secrets of this local AGN and laboratory of star formation. And I for one, can't wait. In slightly more alarming news, although it is nothing to worry about, we got word that JWST actually stopped taking data for a couple of weeks in December. On December 7th, a software fault on board the telescope triggered a safety procedure. Something not right happened on the attitude control system, which controls where the telescope is pointing. And in response, the telescope's instruments intermittently went into a safe mode. During these safe modes, all non-essential systems automatically turn off, leaving the telescope in a protected state so that problems can be resolved. This did result in several pauses to observations, but on December 20th, the JWST team adjusted the commanding system and the telescope resumed full operations. It actually wasn't turned off the whole time, only during these intermittent safe modes, but a couple of days of observing time was lost over the couple of weeks that this went on for. Otherwise, science proceeded as normal in that time. But that's why we might have seen slightly fewer images than normal in December and probably for the coming few weeks too. The observatory and all of its instruments remain in good health and none of them were in any danger during this bizarre event. And to be honest, I'm really glad the safety systems seem to be working and protecting the telescope from any potential problems. Also, all of the affected observations will be rescheduled when they can so we shouldn't even miss out on anything as a result. All in all, what a year it's been with JWST, and it's all been brought to a close with these final images of the year. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you did, and leave a comment below to let me know your favorite JWST image, either from this video or from the year in general. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.